slides. We're going to show up these slides and walk through some of the uh, actions the county board has taken, some of the work we've undertaken. The summer is over. This is the proof. Somebody have a clicker? Am I supposed to do this? No. Come oh, marry here. Oh, anybody read the paper lately? Yeah. Get an email, livability.com. Did an analysis of 2,000 plus cities in the United States looking at a whole range of factors, you know, education, health care, transportation, all the various indices. Number three, best place to live in the United States of America is Arlington County. Yeah. I know you're all wondering who's second, who's first, right? That is so Arlington. That's at all. Right? I think Madison is number one, and I can't remember who. Rochester, Rochester Minnesota. Minnesota. But Rochester, Minnesota. See? We oh, know that. The bottom line is, this is really the result of a lot of work over a lot of decades, long-term planning that's working. All right, next. Uh, streetcar engineering contract. We had a milestone at the last board meeting, awarded a contract for $26 million for preliminary design of this 7.4 mile Columbia Pike Crystal City streetcar. It includes getting to the 30% of design and engineering, the track alignment, power signals, vehicle specs, etc. A major milestone as we move forward with this project. Next. You heard from James. Schools and County Board are working very closely together to meet the growing enrollment needs. Uh, we approved the a uh, brand new elementary school a year and a half ago, Williamsburg, at the Williamsburg Middle School campus. We approved an addition to the Ashland Elementary School. And then at our board meeting in September, we approved an expansion to the Kinley Elementary. Several additions that will allow for about 240 new students at that school. But you know what? These, these additions and these uh, use permits don't only expand the capacity, they're actually improving the school, the school design, the campus with the community next to it as well. Uh, dealing with drainage, for example, big drainage problem, creating community spaces more accessible and usable by the community. This is a really <coughs> strong collaborative success with all the committees involved, the neighbors, schools, and the counties. Next one. Oh, we uh, approved a change to the ordinance that will allow for the uh, cameras video cameras at the school on school buses when they are stopped to catch those and, and uh, record those that pass a school bus when it is stopped. We have about 700 citations over five years, believe it or not, uh, and it's time to stop that. The county board did have a full, wholesome discussion about privacy issues and uh, delayed the implementation until those are worked out and some further outreach is done to the broader community. Important step. You'll read the paper to see how the communities are beginning to step into this area as well. Next, uh, the Northern Virginia region through the Regional Commission uh, in Northern Virginia. Last year it was Fairfax and Loudoun because they had taken a trip. They have sister cities in Turkey, and they had decided to do a collection of blankets for the Syrian refugees. This year they asked the rest of Northern Virginia if we would support them and participate, and we chose them to do so. So. And this is for a three-week period at the beginning of November. We will be collecting blankets at two locations in the county. They did a really fine job last year, and we're looking to significantly increase the contribution this year. Next, two more items, I think. Uh, Affordable Housing Month just ended September. This is just a snapshot of some of the many events and activities, educational forums that were held formed in this very room by the Alliance for Housing Solutions. Uh, a bus tour, I think a bike tour was also had of, of affordable housing facilities. A lot was taken on. Uh, we are getting into the third year of the three-year update of our affordable housing program or policies, and that will be finishing next year. So a lot went on in the month of September with affordable housing. And finally, yeah. I thought y'all might enjoy this right across the street. You know, economic competitiveness is a big deal. We're putting a lot of extra emphasis on it this year. We used to get more than our fair share, and now we have competition. Other people are doing the smart growth we've always done. Silver Line's going out west. DC is doing a better job. Federal government is downsizing. BRAC affecting Arlington. 
So we're putting a little more emphasis on this area. And one of the things that is proposed, so it's before it's come to us, we haven't refined this, we haven't approved it, but it's so cool to look at. I wanted to share a picture <laughs> that I saw at the Boston Bid Annual Meeting. They are looking at a full makeover of the Boston Mall, uh, keeping all the good stuff that you can you remember, the, the sports and the sport and health club, the cinemas, the Macy's and the ice class. But take a look at some of the pictures of what is being proposed. Five pictures you can go through pretty quickly. The mall on the right, on the left, would be where the furniture store is. They're proposing a residential building. And the next one, this is the entrance now would be opened up to be an open air. A lot of the rooftop of the mall will be open to the outside. Next, street light, glass. A lot of new tenants are proposed, retail and uh, entertainment. Next, inside, looking up, open. The roof is gone. Again, these are their proposals. And finally, I think there's one more. So you can see there's a very different uh, complex that is envisioned across the street, which would be a very significant enhancement and asset for Boston. It is being designed for the people who live here. All right, I think that's it, right? That's my last slide. All right, y'all, thanks for everything. November election coming up. Let's do it. Thank you.